On a rock, the church will stand, even when steeples are falling. This is the opening line from the hymn, Him Built on a Rock, and also a representation of my faith. About four years ago, I was driving home from summer camp in Minnesota with my dad, and he said, so, your grandpa's church was struck by lightning and burned down. I was obviously taken aback by this very concern. After all, the church where my brother had been baptized had also burned down about a year before that. This was obviously unexpected. Next week was spent in worrying about the fire, the damages, and what was spared. As if by a miracle, the entire altar section in the gorgeous handcrafted wooden altar was completely untouched. When my great-grandmother, who was in Japan at the time, heard of the fire, she had prayed that the altar would be untouched, and it was. Recently, a fire broke down at Notre Dame de Paris. The blaze destroyed millions of dollars of priceless history and culture. But as if by a miracle, many of the religious artifacts were untouched. The altar and apostle statues and crown of thorns were all saved from the blaze. Everyone was devastated. But Matthew 16, 18 says, And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And that's what happened. The church stayed resilient, holding fast to the fact that the church is a community of people and not a single place. So when everything went wrong, the people went resilient. God helped everyone rebuild and recover from the flames. As for my grandpa's church, it has been rebuilt, and the new building is greater than ever. My point is, even when everything goes wrong and the hardships of life really come, faith allows me to be resilient and know that God will stand by and keep watch and help me recover. Faith to me is the insurance and trust that I can mess up in any way and face the hardships of life, and God will stay with me and support me. You see, when talking about disasters, it is easy for one to forget the support and help that God provides. But with my faith gained through these experiences and the assurance that God will always be with me and support me, I know that I can and will live a long and fulfilling life. Because just as the church is an entity, I can stay resilient in the face of danger with God on my side. On the banner, on my banner, the symbol I chose to summarize this faith was a teddy bear. This isn't really any teddy bear, but it is a bear named Hope. This bear was given to my grandfather as a gift and as a symbol of hope through the flames. It is being passed throughout the Lutheran community for churches in need. It saw murders and fires and tornadoes, not because it's unlucky, but because it is a physical symbol of the hope that radiates and inspires all to rise up and be resilient in the face of danger. The bear has a little booklet of all the churches who have been hurt by disaster, but uplifted by the gift of hope. There are churches from all over sharing their stories and their inspirations from the symbol of hope. Forever inspiring <coughs> resilience in the face of danger, hope the bear symbolizes my journey through Christ and hope. It shows the hope through the flames, and my faith is that the flame of hope would never die. My faith statement is about doubt, specifically my doubt in Christianity. There's so many bad things that Christianity is involved with. All the time I hear about Christian schools firing their excluding their teachers and students just because of their sexuality. Christian churches firing their gay choir directors and businesses <coughs> refusing cakes for lesbians. They are doing all these things saying, I am doing this because I'm a Christian. If people hate me, if, pe if people hate people like me, saying, I hate you because I'm a Christian, then why would I, Sophie, want to be a Christian? Why would I want to believe in something that is working against me? Shouldn't faith be about bringing people together? I'm here today because my mom said, hey, let's give it another chance. And sure enough, we did. First sermon we heard at Prince of Peace was by Pastor Christine, who is a girl. It was about diverse families, which included same-sex couples. It was relieving to hear someone who worked for the church saying, it's okay to be yourself. I began paying attention to the people around me, and I noticed they were okay. They weren't like all, all the people shouting, kill the gays, or trying to hide and, or push out LGBTQ people. 
over the years, I realized that people still accepted me when I was open about myself. That's why I chose my verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 18. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For, for, the, for the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that, that, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. Our differences make us stronger. When I am true to myself, I am the person I was born to be. My community is stronger. I am a hockey player. More specifically, I am a kid's butt for a ball defenseman. Because I am extra awesome, I do occasionally score goals for my team. But my real role is stopping the other team from scoring. When I am in my position and do what I am meant to do, my team is stronger. People may want me to be something else, like a figure skater. That's just wrong. As Paul said to the Corinthians, let noses be noses, toes be toes, and I should be me. I am happy to have found faith in the community that is okay with me being me. I know this is just the beginning, and I still have lots of doubts, but I am making friends, and I am learning, and I am challenging myself to be more, to, to be more open. I don't know where I will be 10 years from now, but at least I know today that Christianity, Christianity isn't all bad.